Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. On we go here. So I don't know why it, it, it's saying that that's unreachable up there. Because, like, quite literally, I'm, I'm there. It might be that it doesn't like that fence being there. That might be the bit that it doesn't like. <laughs> we are gonna struggle to get anything delivered to our farm, aren't we? Because we've we've picked this point above the rocks. So in order, we're, we're gonna have to build a track. That's something that we're gonna need to do. We're gonna have to like properly put in a track coming all the way up this hill. <laughs> and we've got to be able to get up and down here as well. So we're gonna have to smooth out some of this land in order to be able to get across here. This is... We're going to have to plan this really carefully. In order to be able to get up this bit, this is going to take careful planning to be able to do all this. Once we get up here, we've got this kind of level area right here. Now, this, this bit up here, this, this is absolutely great. We've got everything that we could want up here. All right, we've got the level area. We'll be able to have our little sheet pen in a minute. That's going to work quite nicely as well. So let's just drop that one down there. I'm also going to take this one off and leave this one here. Like that. And unhitch that one. So I've got the hay turner is ready to go. Let me shut that tractor off and we'll go back to this one. Let's start. Let me start it up again. And I just want to finish off the last little bit of grass right here. And then we'll be done. We can get the hay turner going on this bit. Before I actually start with the hay turner, though, I will just do a quick test to make sure that the sheep pen can go down here. We've got enough room for it. So let's just stop that a second. And we go into construction in here. I absolutely was not planning to do sheep, but sheep fit this so perfectly. Like, okay, we, we, we've got plenty of room there for the sheep. That That is absolutely spot on perfect. We can build a little bit of a track. There's even room to put a second sheep pen if we want to. We could always do something... Excuse me. We could always do something like that. Overlaps with another object. That's, oh, that's all the grass that we've got on the field. We've got to pick all of that up and move it out of the way. So that bit, that, that's going to work really well. We, we, we've got no issues there. Sheds. 455000 for that one. That's um, a garage for contractors. Shelter with an hourly income to park. It has the solar panels on the top, so you get an hourly income. 60 euros an hour coming in. Big garage with a vehicle workshop. Oh, that one snap fits. The look of it. That's a, that's directional. That one is. That one's not. That one whizzes around. So something to do with the the vehicle workshop maybe. Got that great big one there. A bulk haul right there. There's another snap fit one. I don't know why some of these snap fit and some of them don't. But I mean the the money on some of these sheds is is quite ridiculous. Now that is a little bit more like it, although it's still forty four thousand. It's quite expensive. This one here is 10 grand. Nice and cheap. And we could store hay in there as well. That that would be ideal. That that would fit quite nicely. It's probably our best option, actually. The the 10,000 open front one. Um, you've got a, a closed side one there. It's quite a bit bigger. But I don't think we need anything that substantial at the moment. So it would be this one. We've just got to find a place to put it. And that one there, I think, would be nice, but it is 44,000. So that one, again, I'm not quite sure about at the moment. And then this is just like silos, silo extensions, containers, tools. No. Decorative items over here, we've got those. They're literally pointless. Like, there's just, there's nothing to them, right? You've got these little tiny sheds and that. There's nothing to them, and there's no real point that... No real. There's no point to them at all. Like There's just nothing with them. I get that this is a big scale farming game. 
But with the really small scale stuff that they've got, I'm a little bit disappointed about the choices that we've got for small sheds. Like that one and this one here really is the, the small shed choices that we've got. I'd like to have this one, but we can't justify spending 45,000 euros on something. So it's going to be 45, 46,000 to level the ground on something like that when that's going to be literally all of our money so we're gonna to have to go with the cheap option like this anyway we'll, we'll deal with that one in a minute so we can put the sheep in here that's that's the, the first thing is we can put the sheep in here we'll take our mower and we'll move this one out of the way and then we can get going with turning the hay well i came back into the game you can see i've added in the money that we put out for doing that fence all the way up across there because i figure that boundary fence would already be there um this one seems to have wandered itself off down across the hill for some strange reason i don't really know why uh, a couple of extra mods have dropped from the mod hub um it's just a couple of trailer packs mostly uh there's that one right there it's actually got its own dolly to go with it which i think is really cool because quite often the base dolly of the game or at least it was in fs uh 19 the base dolly didn't necessarily fit all of the different packs so we've got a rather cool big trailer right here this one probably won't be being used in this series um but there are there's another trailer pack here this roland pack and this one does actually have some smaller things and some that we might end up using so there's this one here which is a dump trailer this one could be useful for carrying stone and things like that around maybe if we're scooping up snow and tipping it out in the winter or something like that i don't really know um i don't know if you i'm assuming you can pick up snow and move it around i i, I have no idea at the moment we've got containers here with a container trailer right there which i thought was quite cool and we've got an animal trailer here which is um extra to the base game animal so it's nice that we've got an additional animal trailer here there's a couple of muck spreaders in here as well there's all stuff that we haven't like we, we haven't even touched on yet but there's um the bale trailers and then standard trailers and things like that so it's quite a nice little pack there apparently roland is quite a popular french um breed of trailer so that's quite nice um i always like these um trailer the turntable trailers uh these are obviously quite handy right here but for some reason i don't know why i just quite like the turntable trailers like they, they always appeal to me personally so um we've got these in here as well and you've got um couple of color options here for the trailers as well and I, I just think that they're quite cool so we, we, we've got a number of different options in there there is another mod that has been added into the game if i go here left shift and z to sleep it is the sleep anywhere mod that has just been dropped and i was wondering how we were going to do the whole sleeping thing in this series turns out we no longer need to worry about it we can sleep anywhere so we don't need to go and buy the three hundred and fifty thousand euro farmhouse and place it down we can just go to sleep so long as we're not inside a vehicle apparently we're not allowed to settle back inside a vehicle we have to be standing up outside so we'd get our sleeping bag or something like that and and do that um so there is a mod that is going to there's a couple of mods that are in testing if you want to see mods that are in testing go to the giants website click on the forum and then go to the general forum and there is a pinned post in there that will tell you all mods that are currently in testing and give you numbers of mods that are awaiting testing currently we've got 110 mods waiting to be tested average testing time is about three average wait time on the list is about three days um very interesting is the some of the mods on the list of currently being tested now there's one that is a fillable palette which suggests to me that we've got a pallet that can be placed down on any of the pallet points that will be in the get you know with all the production things and it can be filled up and can take a lot more than just the standard quantities that the game currently allows in the pallets because some of them 
they don't have very much. Oh, something that I do actually quite like about this, if I just run away there and um, let it scrape my leg, you look here, it's actually kicking the texture of the grass out into the cut grass, and it does kick it behind and out to the side a lot more now. And that's quite realistic. That's why, I mean, it did do it a bit anyway, but now it seems to do it a bit more. And I actually really like that. Quite realistic. It's also why I really liked in the last uh, iteration of the game, the, um, there was a crone, um, a crone hay turner. I can't remember exactly what it was called, but it allowed you to run the thing at an angle. So when you went round the outside edge of the field, you did it at an angle, and it used to kick the grass into the field. Um, I spent almost all of the time doing hay in FS19 using that um, hay turner for the very reason that I didn't want to be... Um, let's put that on one time speed, shall we, rather than half times. We'll use half times when we've got to, but we'll try and leave it on one time speed. Um, yeah, I, I spent so much time using it, I don't actually rem remember what kind of the, the other base game machines were like in FS19. I, re I really don't. I, um, didn't, I hardly used any of them. It was it was that one that I used. I used to love that one. I thought that was a brilliant mod, being able to kick the stuff in. So I just relied really heavily on that one. So anyway, that one, um, I, I don't know about uh, hate turners, but we do have the pallet one, the pallet mod that is coming in. It is, I think, going to be quite significant when it comes to doing the production stuff. I think that is going to make a big difference to a lot of people's gameplay, and that is something I really love. Um, there's also a mod, um, Extended Placeables is what the mod is called. Now, at the moment, I've got no idea what Extended Placeables might do. I suspect it's going to add in a little bit of extra functionality to the placeables because at the moment, placeables, you can, when you go to put them down, you don't have any option to raise or lower them. Whereas this mod I'm hoping would add in that extended does suggest that there's going to be some extra options for you. Uh, so I'm hoping that it would add the functionality that can raise and lower the mods. I'm also really, really hoping that it will also add in the ability to um, do the landscaping, the sculpting of the land around placeables, because at the moment that's something that you can't go and do. So there we go, we've got the, the hay all turned now. Um, that's something that you can't go and do at the moment. You cannot go and put a placeable... Uh, you, you can't sculpt land around a placeable. There's no... It just won't let you do it. So, for example, let me just give you a quick working demonstration of that for anybody that's not aware. If I go to landscaping over here, I've got the three options here. I can raise lower, I can level, soften, and there's a new one that they've added in, which is the slope. Now, I love that option for the slope. I think it's brilliant. Once you get used to using it, it is a really helpful tool. We own this land over here, so in theory I should be able to raise and lower it around these stones. I'm pressing the button, it's not letting me do it. It'll let me do it, possibly, no, it won't even let me do it right in the middle. I, I'm, I'm literally, not, I'm not allowed to do anything in there at all, because there's these rocks around it. So we've got these placeables here. It won't allow me to landscape anywhere near them. Now, I can go and put plants in. Some people are saying that there's no option for painting in... There's the square, by the way. And the square does still work. And if you press uh, V now, you change it to a circle. But you can still have the square and you can still paint stuff in with the square. Um, so you've got the painting options. There were some people saying it doesn't add grass. You can add grass, actually, if you go here. You've got various shrubs, flowers, so I've, I've got some flowers there. Uh, I've got another one here. And then there's grass here. I can just sort of put that in around. But that is the proper meadow grass right there. And you see if I'm putting the meadow grass down, it does actually put a mixture of flowers into the meadow grass as well. And then I could go along and I could just put a big patch of 
flowers in on top of that if that's what I wanted to do. So we do have those options there in the landscaping. Um, the extended placeables, no idea. All we know is the name of it. So it might just be something to do with the placeables, but I'm remaining hopeful at the moment that it will also allow us to landscape near placeables because if you go and place down a building, it would be really nice to be able to sculpt the landscape a little bit around that building that you've just gone and placed in. I pressed the wrong button there. It would make things a lot better, I feel. I think, I think that would be a huge, huge improvement. Now... We want to grab that one. Hook that one up like that. We've got all of the rakes out on the front right there. So let me let's turn around so that we can clearly see this thing in action there. And then we unfold and you basically you go around and you put all of these on. Now, I've done this in real life many times. And it's actually quite fun doing is I, I always like doing it those clips on there they're really big clips especially made for these machines and it's just something very satisfying about unpopping the clips putting the rake in popping the clips back in it all fits perfectly and um, sometimes you've got to wiggle them around a bit to get them to fit just right but I don't know I, there was, I always enjoyed doing that job taking the rakes on and off something about it and I always liked doing that with a lot of the machines setting them up in the field unfolding them and, and like unfolding them with the hydraulics yeah sometimes it does look quite cool when you're doing that but I always liked the machines that required you to get out of the cab and do some manual setting up of them there, there, there was something I always found rather pleasing about doing that it was quite a, quite a, a satisfying little thing to go and do it was just to hop out of the cab when you got into a new field and go and set things up and then also once you finish the field to hop out of the cab and go and um fold it back up again you know it was, it was it was quite a nice little break from just sat in the cab uh driving around in circles um i don't know i mean i would big fields i tend to get bored in big fields i mean i, I know a lot of people would tend to get bored driving a tractor in big fields because it's a big field it gets rather dull I always liked small fields. One, the small fields are quite interesting because you've got so much uh, shunting and manoeuvring to do quite often. Um, but also because you get to finish the field. You get this sense of accomplishment. You get this sense of, right, I have achieved this. I've finished that field. Yes, you don't get anywhere near as much land covered by just doing small fields. You, you're a lot more efficient. You, you cover more land during the day if you're doing big fields but you only get to say at the end of the day I did a field I mean yeah if you count it in acres rather than fields it's different but there's a sense of accomplishment to closing the gate on a field after you've gone and done a task in there there's something about that that I find immensely satisfying so that's what probably one of the reasons that I always you know you, you completed the job then it's it's finished you, you don't have to go back and do any more job is complete that's it it's done and i just really like that so that's that's just me i mean every, everybody's different so some of you are probably wondering what on earth i'm talking about and you would take a big field over a small field any day of the week and yeah they can be a bit annoying to work sometimes a uh, small field when you trying to shunt around the corners and that but still up there that's that's just me. I've I've, I've always sort of preferred the, the smaller scale of things, I, and I've worked both ends of the spectrum on farms. I've worked some quite large scale stuff. I mean, large scale for the UK. I'll just add that in as a little disclaimer. Large scale for the UK, not necessarily large scale on the international side of things, because I know that some of you living like sort of Australia and certain places in the US and Canada and that. Um, you, you look at something that I would consider large scale as little more than a hobby farm and anything less than 30,000 acres or something utterly obscene is just not worth getting out of bed for in the morning. Um, yeah, I haven't really worked that kind of scale, but I'm happy with what I've achieved. I'm, I'm happy with the farms that I've worked. I, I would consider those to be fairly large farms. Now, all we got to do is just finish doing this little bit here. 
And then we will be able to place our sheep pen down once we have gone and gotten the baler and we've bailed these bales up and then we've cleared them. We haven't yet had any new sheds being um, added to the mod hub and I would like to get some small old sheds. So I'm going to keep at the moment, I know that I could be hunting around on other websites for other mods. At the moment, I'm sticking to Mod Hub and a couple of select places such as Stevie um, for looking for my mods. And, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, a couple of select places like uh, Stevie and a few other Facebook pages that I follow for looking for my mods. At the moment, I'm not traveling too much further afield than that there are a few people on our discord channel that keep a close eye on the development of some of the bigger mods and later on uh, no doubt that i will start taking a look at some of the bigger stuff that is released for beta testing before it gets put onto the giants mod hub such as gps and AI vehicle extension, little you know mods like that that I like to use. Um, so there will be plenty of mods coming along, and there will be all kinds of different ones and mods that I start to use that don't originate from uh, Giants Mod Hub. I will provide links. I'm not going to be providing the links for them in all of the video descriptions because links change and get updated over time. It makes it more complicated if I put them in the videos. So I have a page on my Discord channel that has the links to the mods. So when we start using the, all of the FS19 mods, they're listed on there. So if you if there are mods that you're wanting to know about. They are listed on our Discord channel. You can go and have a look at them on there. Um, and the same will apply with FS22. When I start using new mods, they will end up on those pages so that you can have links and go and find them. Now, one little tiny bit left. And then we've done this and we need to go and get our baler so that we can bail up the small bales. Now, we've got 90,000 euros at the moment. That's enough to get our sheep pen and to also get a few sheep started off in the pen. Because this is the hardcore series, I feel that we shouldn't be... Is it possible? One thing that you can't do, which you would do in real life... Uh, this one here, the whole thing, you would fold up by hand. This, this machine here is all folded by hand. There's no hydraulics doing this one. So you would actually get out of the cab and you would do this. You would fold up everything on this one by hand. Um, but there isn't an option to go up to it and just press X on here. So we do have to do it from inside the cab. It's a little bit of a shame, but you would do all of that by hand. Love the sound effect on that, though. That is actually really cool. It, like you, you hear it clonking into place on there. It's really awesome. Like, there's so much detail in this game now. There's, there's so many little things that they've added. It's absolutely fantastic. I really love it. Now, I have got a bale spike over there, a bale grab. And... I was wondering about getting the bale collector. Let me move away from those. That bale collector, we won't do that one at the moment. If we start to do a much larger amount of hay here in the meadows, then we could very well go for that one and we'll then pick the bales up off the ground using that bale grab over there. Uh, the other option, of course, though, is that we change our baler. Now, it's 22000 for that one. We could sell that one and we could buy a square baler. The smallest and cheapest square baler, though, the big square baler, is the Quadrant at €153,500, which isn't cheap. So, realistically, we'd be looking at a round baler, which would be this Pottinger impress right here 
it would be that one right there. It makes a 1.25 meter bale. I don't know what the actual capacity of the bale is, but that would be the size, that, that would be the baler that we would get. Now, round balers on steep ground. Always an interesting proposition, always an interesting thing to go and do. We've got our mower that's wandered off down the hill over there. We're going to have to do something about that. It, it, it is an interesting thing to try and deal with um, round bales on a steep meadow. We've got a lot of meadow grass here, so we'll you know that there's a lot of different stuff that we'd be able to do here. We can get quite a big harvest of hay here, and which means that we can put a load back for our sheep, and then we can put a load more um, aside to be sold when the prices pick up a bit, maybe. The thing that is making me cautious about switching over to a round baler is the fact that we would then have to pick all of them up. Um, we, we've got to be able to pick them all up. You've got to be able to load them all, so we, 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 there's a lot, quite a bit of load of work involved with doing that. I mean, there'll be load of whatever we do with bales is going to be load of work to start with. We don't have any auto load trailers, and we'd have to get an artisan if we want to do it any other way. The artisan option at the moment, if we were to get a small baler and then an artisan stacker, we could do it like that. That is actually something that I'm seriously considering if we're going to be doing a lot more hay, but. I, I, I don't know at the moment. I'm, I'm really torn on how we should approach doing any hay. So I'm not planning to cut very large quantities of grass just yet. I will be cutting large quantities of grass at some point, but I don't know when and I'm not quite sure how we're going to approach it. Um, possibly I'll... Well, well, we'll end up cutting at least one lot, like before we turn stuff into field, before we plough stuff up. I'll want to like, do something with the meadow grass. Now, something that I don't have is a front weight for this tractor. So that's something that we're going to want to buy now. We'll go with this one, the black one right there. Yes, it's a thousand euros. We, we're going to need a front weight of some kind think that that one does actually seem to be about the right size and not only that it um the, the black does kind of match the tractor as well because the majority of the tractor is in black that the blue is just in bits down the side so there he goes he dips down a bit on the front most of the jobs that we got at the moment it's not really going to make a difference maybe that one is a little bit too heavy for the tractor at the moment maybe we should have something a little bit lighter but i think it'd be all right and it's going to help with the four-wheel drive as well. You, you engage the four-wheel drive with a uh, one-ton weight on the front, and it's definitely going to help us. So I know it sticks out a little bit, but I, I, I think that's about right. I don't know. If anything, it's too heavy. That, that would be the only concern. That this, the front weight that we've got at the moment is a little tiny bit too heavy. Now, we need to drive all the way back up to the top again. I know that we do have one piece of cheese over next to the church. It's on a bench over there. I'm very curious. We've got a restaurant here. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.